we're talking about the G8-G20 summit. This was a federal uh, exercise. And, uh, uh, you know, there's no federal inquiries going on, save what's happening at this committee. Every other board that's looking into this is either a provincial or a municipal one. We have before this committee, we have the Minister of Public Safety, we have the Special Advisor, Mr. Alcock, we've got the National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister, and we have the Commander of the Integrated Security Unit, and I, I must tell you that all I hear is that someone else has the answers. Now, uh, so I'm going to try to be focused here. Mr. Alcock, the question that Mr. Kanye was asking you, asking the Minister, was about the choice of two sites. And my understanding of the Minister's evidence was quite clear that he was very clearly saying this was your advice to him, to have two sites. Is that correct or not? Was that your advice? Mr. Chairman, the Minister is the Minister for Public Safety, and he is referring to the kinds of advice that I gave him, which was in respect of security matters. But as I've already said, the decision on whether it would be one site, two sites, or which site it would be is a decision for the government, not for a single minister. It was a decision by the government and depended upon a number of streams of advice, one of which was security. But right. security was not the sole and deciding okay, well, factor. I, I'm no security expert, but it would seem to me that one site's easier to secure than two. Is that correct? That's a generalization, Minister, and can, as uh, honor no, Not yet. Mr. Chairman, yeah. Mr. Chairman, that's a generalization that I'm not actually sure I'm quite ready to go to. The reality is usually one site is better, but it can depend upon uh, what you're confronted with, the nature of the site, and so on. The, rea it, the reality has a way of intruding, Mr. Chairman. Now, um, Chief Superintendent McNeil, I, I appreciate the difficulty, but, but as the head of the Integrated Security Unit, my understanding is you brought together, uh, there were brought together, I think up to 10 different entities that were responsible for security, including a number of federal entities, the RCMP, CSIS, the Canadian Forces, among others. Was that correct? Yes, that's correct. Who's responsible for their actions and behaviour? Each agency is responsible. For, in each person, it starts with the individual. Each individual is responsible for their own actions and behaviour. I mean, ultimately, who's responsible? Their own agency would be okay. responsible for it. Uh, now, uh, there's a... I had two young students from Kelowna, BC, who came to see me. They, they were sleeping in the gym at the University of Toronto, and they were awakened with a hundred other people at six in the morning by police bursting in with their guns drawn. They were kicked in the ribs. Uh, they were arrested, saying every one of them was under arrest for conspiracy to commit a criminal act. Now, I'm wondering, uh, that doesn't just happen by uh, an officer who wakes up one morning and decides that they're going to go arrest a hundred people. Who would have been responsible for making a decision like that to do a mass arrest of sleeping students at the University of Toronto? As I stated earlier, if the, the arrest, we talked about the jurisdictional responsibilities earlier. The Toronto Police Service retains jurisdictional responsibility for the City of Toronto. I, I'm coordinating the event. The RCMP is the lead in t to make sure that security is provided. I check with every, I look at everyone's operational plans before the event, we go over the plans, and I, at the end of the day, I will sign off and say I'm satisfied, we have adequate personnel. Sir, I, we, I respect your answer, but, but you're not answering my question. No. I'm just trying to find out who would have been responsible I'm, for making a I'm call trying, like that. I, I'm you're, trying, you're a security person. I'm trying to get to that, okay. just so I can explain it. So I, just so you understand why, I'm, I'm not trying to avoid your question. I'm trying to explain my role and my responsibility. My role and responsibility is to bring all of those people together. But Toronto Police Service, the OPP, Peel Regional Police maintain their jurisdictional responsibilities. If they are, they would coordinate. If there was a rush, they would again. coordinate. I'm sorry to interrupt I only have five minutes, so that's why we have to. I understand, but you're not answering my question. Who would be responsible for a decision like that? Toronto Police Service, if it's in the Toronto... If, it, if the arrest occurred in Toronto, it's Toronto Police Service. But, but, sir, the whole summit occurred in Toronto, and there were military, there was RCMP, there was CSIS. Uh, you're saying the Toronto Police were responsible for all the decisions uh, that were made? Not every decision. It depends on what the decision is. As I stated earlier, if we're moving motorcades in the city, there was, I, I could... It would take me a long time to explain, but I can... There's three specific areas of responsibility. One is what we call the controlled access zone. That means the area around the, the conference center where the center was actually, or the conference was actually held. That's the total jurisdiction of the RCMP during the event. Then there's a restricted access zone, a little bigger area that took in the hotels. You can draw another circle on a map around that. That again is RCMP jurisdiction. 
outside that circle, we now get into what's called an interdiction zone, and then the rest of the city, and that's the Toronto, that's Toronto. Police Okay. Service. Now, you mentioned civil liberties. Mr. Davies. Okay. Um, and, and the right of people to protest. This was the largest mass arrest in Canadian history. 900 Canadians, innocent Canadians, were arrested and then let go. Not thugs and hooligans, but bystanders and people who were peacefully protesting, uh, journalists, lawyers. Do you have any uh, anything to tell this committee about whether this was a success or a failure uh, and from a security point of view, which I, I imagine public safety also includes the right of people to safely protest. Davis. Is that, uh, what's Mr. your McNeil. comment on that? The, the security operation, it's, we, we went into this security operation with several goals. One being to uh, protect the people of Toronto and to protect the internationally protected persons who came. The second, another goal was to ensure that the conference and the summits were able to continue. Um, from a security standpoint regarding the protection of the IPPs and the conference, it went off without a hitch. This doesn't always happen. In place, parts of the world, there are disturbances and roads blocked, people can't get to meetings. There was nothing delayed. We, we set out, we set our fences where we did in order to secure a specific area of the city and we were successful in doing that. We were very successful. The question that you've asked about uh, arrests those things will have to be answered by someone else. I can tell you the operation was very successful. The decision on whether the arrests are justified in that is not for me to make. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McNeil. We'll now move to Mr. McKenzie and Mr. Lobb. I share some the time with uh, Mr. Lobb. Um, Mr. Alcock, I'd just like to uh, give you a little quote from a newspaper to, just to indicate that no less a